Welcome back to another Daily Walk. And today I want to talk briefly about following the Lord versus following other people and things like this. This is an interesting little point of conversation and just something I thought about today as I was getting my reading done. And uh, today I'm in uh, Second Chronicles. So I read about the alliance between Jehoshaphat and Ahab. Now, uh, there's so many sermons you could write just on this one small section. So for the people, there's nothing there to write about. I mean, I could throw off some topics for you. One of those is, hey, the problems of influences. I wrote my whole book, Joe Osh's Influences, uh, my latest um, Christian book about um, the importance of friends and influences and, and what this means in your life. Uh, and so that certainly is, uh, uh, that certainly is a, uh, uh, a thing to consider. The other factor here is that this alliance is ultimately, despite Jehoshaphat being praised in Chronicles for following God and doing the right thing and even having the blessings of God, this alliance between this godly king and Ahab is what ultimately led to the downfall of the southern kingdom of Judah. That all started right here with this alliance. But what we want to talk about here is following the Lord or not, because Jehoshaphat followed the Lord. We know that Ahab followed a bunch of Baals and a bunch of other nonsense. Now, at this point in time, I don't recall exactly. I'd have to go back and dig into the more of the history. It really wasn't as relevant here. Is this before or after the uh, Mount Horeb situation? Um, is that Horeb? Carmel situation. I'm sorry, with Elijah. Um, and uh, what was going on there is that uh, uh, Ahab, so Jehoshaphat here, he is so blessed of God, the scripture even says that the people around him were terrified of him. Uh, I'm going to have to look for that spot there. That was up in um, uh, up in Second Chronicles 17. He sought the uh, God of his father, followed his commandments, and did not act as Israel did. The Lord established his kingdom uh, control and all Judah brought tribute to Jehoshaphat and he had great riches and honor. He took pride in the ways of the Lord and moved the high places and the Asherim from Judah. Um, and then it does go on either a little bit before that. Uh, it's right down here. Verse 10, the dread of the Lord was on the kingdoms of the lands, which were around Judah, that they did not make war against Jehoshaphat. So the Philistines are bringing him gifts. The Arabians are bringing him gifts. So he grows greater and greater and greater. Well, the people that uh, there is war with is Israel. But Ahab, the king of Israel at this time, he decides to go in and make an alliance with Jehoshaphat. So now Israel is aligned with the one kingdom that the nations will not go near because they're terrified of him in the hand of God. <laughs> and so... Uh, they're sitting back and chilling. In fact, at one point in time, it's like, we bring their thrones. You got two kings are on throne. They're sitting there just flabbing the jab, blah, blah, blah. Hey, would you go to war with me against these guys up here? And uh, uh, Ramoth Gilead, he says, uh, Ahab said, uh, Ahab, king of Israel, said Jehos Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, will you go with me against Ramoth Gilead? And he said, I am as you are. My people's your people. We'll be with you for the battle. But Jehoshaphat says to him, hey, this is where we're getting into the importance of our thing here. He said, please inquire first of the word of the Lord. And so here's Jehoshaphat says, hey, let's see what God has to say. I mean, Ahab's like, Lord of the Lord, sure. Uh, which Lord? We got Baal, we got Asherah, yeah, we got Asherah. But what we see here isn't that Ahab goes for the Baals. It is that he calls for the prophets. Now, we have to understand at this point in time, there were schools of prophets. There were people professionally trained as prophets. So these were people that were not hearing the word of God necessarily. They were doing what they were trained to do. And that is really what the difference was. And so uh, these people, clearly, they were doing what the king wanted. They were political servants. They were like a, bad advisors to a president today. They're just feeding them what the president wants to hear, not telling them what the best situation happens to be. And so he says, uh, verse 5, so Second Chronicles 18, verse 5, The king of Israel assembled the prophets, 400 men, and said, Shall we go against Ramoth Gilead to battle or shall they refrain? And they all said, go up. God has given, given it into the hands of the king. 
They're like, yeah, of course you should go because you want to go. So Jehoshaphat sees right through this. He's like, wait, these guys over here are just kind of telling the king here what he wants to hear. Jehoshaphat says, is there not a prophet of the Lord that we may inquire of him? So the king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, there is yet one man that we can call on. But I hate him because he never prophesies good for me, always evil. So this is Micaiah, son of Imlah. But Jehoshaphat says, let the king not say that. So um, the, uh, they bring Micaiah, uh, Micaiah here, and uh, he basically, this he's like literally saying here in jest, uh, as they're sitting there, he knows what he says. And, um, and he basically says to him, oh yeah, the prophets all said go, so go before him, you know. Uh, but then Ahab's like, dude, stop messing around with me. What does the, real, the Lord really say? He says, well, I saw all Israel as sheep without a shepherd. So the prophet of God says, no, don't go unless you want to die in battle. Okay, all the false prophets are feeding him what he wants to say. That's really where we in modern Christianity, we're going to set the text down now and talk of application for our life. Because I've talked about this before. One of the tenets of Reformed theology is sola scriptura, by the scripture alone. And this is a very important principle. And a lot of people who are Reformed or even tangential to Reformed, you know, Baptists reading a MacArthur Study Bible might fall in this camp. People who really like R.C. Sprawl fall in this camp. They are Reformed people. They say sola scriptura, sola scriptura, sola scriptura. Yet when you sit down and talk with them, they will tell you what MacArthur says or what Sprawl says or Lutzer says or, Lord forbid, heretic Andy Stanley says or uh, what Joel Osteen says. The problem is, is that the Reformed view is sola scriptura. And while we tend to believe that on, on the surface, we live our lives by sola someone else's scriptura. Now, I think Andy, Andy Stanley is an absolute heretic, and he has demonstrated that over the course of his life. And now more recently, more things have come out that absolutely demonstrate how correct I was. Joel Osteen is a word faith lunatic. Okay, I generally like the teachings of Sprawl and MacArthur. I would say if you like Okay, I want to listen and study for a preacher. I'm a new believer. I want to listen to a preacher where I can be fairly confident. Pretty much everything I hear is going to be correct. I'd point you towards one of those two men, even though they may differ on some views. Overall, these two men are very faithful in the scriptures and very good teachers of the scriptures. So we tend to find a person like this and we tend to latch onto their teaching and everything they teach becomes us. I got news for you. Despite MacArthur, I think is the most sound pastor living in the world today. There are still things I disagree with him on the scripture about. And so I'm sure he might disagree with me on those principles. Am I saying I'm better than him or he's better than me? No, I'm saying that we are ultimately accountable to our own interpretation of the word before God. And if I sit down and I get something wrong and I, and God's like, why? Well, because MacArthur believed it, but I kind of thought something different reading this. I'm going to be held accountable for that. But if I listen to the sound teaching and I completely consider it and I read the text and I just cannot see that teaching and I see a different teaching and I find this other teaching that is very consistent with the text at least I can stand before God, and, and if God says you were wrong about this, I say, well, you know what? I might have been wrong, but at least I came up with my own idea. Now, ultimately, as Sprawl does teach, error in doctrine is sin. So we have to work hard to get it right. And we always have to stop and consider and pause and, and ponder. But what we shouldn't do is find people we like listening to and latch everything we have onto them. This is why I'm not a huge advocate for the modern model of church membership. Now, I believe going to church every week is a very good thing, and I think you should go to the same church every week unless there's very, very good, clear reason you shouldn't be going there. Like, clear sin, clearly teaching of errors, things like this. But the idea that we're going to go into a church and completely forsake everything we have to follow this pastor or this church, I do not see that in scripture nearly as much. Because even the apostles 
are arguing and debating over principles, and each one of them is standing on, they are scripture! Peter is scripture! Paul is scripture! James is scripture! Yet when you brought these people together, they had theological differences. We have to recognize that. And each one had to stand on his own understanding of the word. Now, this carries with it an equal warning that we can't just read the scripture and make anything we want. It's our own personal private interpretation and off I go into the world to start my own heretical church. My principle is, is that we can't get so hung up when there are solid theological views on multiple different perspectives. For example, are you Calvinist or, or Arminianist? I believe full well that the Bible teaches Calvinism, but I can see how somebody can come to an Arminianist argument given the circumstance of circumstances. Okay, it, is there pre-tribulation or mid-tribulation, raptures, you know, these different things. Different people have different teachings on these things, and we can't necessarily brand everyone a heretic if they believe in pre-tribulation or mid-tribulation raptures, you know. And we have to understand this, but the point is, is that in this, Jehoshaphat is concerned with seeking what the Lord says, not seeking what a pool of other people around him says. And so we have to be far more concerned with what, uh, what our understanding of the scripture, and this means first and foremost, reading the scripture. I'm holding up a phone, of course. I should be having a Bible with me when I do this. Um, I believe reading in paper Bibles is better. I actually read paper Bibles, but the, the phone is what I use for my verses here and for uh, a little bit of study here and there. Um, phones are not horrible, but they're not amazing either. Uh, the principle is you need to be in your word on a regular basis. In your word on a regular basis. You are accountable to God to that, to seek to understand what the scripture teaches. With that, uh, you can find a copy of that book we started to talk about, Joe Osh's Influences. That is available on my website or anywhere else you buy books online. Uh, ourwalkinchrist.com is my site, or you can just look it up, Joe Osh's Influences. Anywhere you buy books online, you should be able to find that. Thank you for watching, and I hope that you enjoy your daily walk in our Lord.